Hello everyone and welcome to my new session. I am Nanda Kishore and I am here to discuss a very interesting topic. It is believed of all the species, human being is considered the most intelligent. He can go to any extent to fulfill his desires or goals. Here is one such chapter that we are going to learn where a human being has no limit and he can go to any extent to fulfill his dreams. The Gardener. This chapter seems to be no more than a moral story, but it has a great message to the entire mankind. Written by P. Lankesh, the author sees and tells the reader that he conceived this story in a flash. When he is travelling towards Chandrai Patna, if you don't know where Chandrai Patna is, it falls in the boundaries of Hassan district. And he looks at the man, an old man, standing near a coconut grove near Chandrai Patna. So how does he describe him? This old man is very tall figure and he has a long beak like nose, a strong muscular arms. In one hand, he is carrying a spade and in the other hand, he has tucked the newspaper under his arms. Now, after walking several hundred miles, he reaches this place and words were exchanged with the landlord or the plantation owner. And guess what? The plantation owner wanted a man like him and he has appeared in front of the owner. Now what happens? After walking hundreds of miles, he has come to this plantation and this man is believed to be well versed in agriculture. And not just that, he seems to be a philosopher as well. The author looks at this man to be somebody else apart from an agriculturist. He sees him as a philosopher, an overseer, a guide or maybe more. Coming back to this, now after coming to this plantation, the owner of this plantation flourished a lot. Why? Because an old man has come after he came to the plantation, pity thefts, the robbers who were stealing in daily basis stopped coming to the plantation. His luxury grew, his wealth doubled. So what else does the owner require? Now he is completely happy. So what does it lead to later? Arrival of the old man helps the owner earn a lot of money and fame. Not just money and fame, he had more number of friends. He had more number of admirers. And after getting all these pleasures, all these luxury, the owner thinks of getting or in indulging himself into adultery. If you don't know what adultery is, it is nothing but extramarital affair and also umpteen vices, which means the cruel things which he goes on doing. So owner's wife, what happens later? When this is going on, for a few days or few months, now the plantation owner's wife is wondering whether this old man arrival was for good or bad. Why is she thinking so? Because her husband flourished, his wealth doubled, that is a good thing. But why is she thinking the arrival of the man was for bad because he not only helped her husband to flourish in life 
Now it has led her husband to involve himself in a bad thing. So she was worried. As days passed on, one day the old man observes her and he smiles as if he knew about her plight. So this old man, he believes, he strongly believes that I exactly know the plight of the owner's wife. What is the meaning of plight here? The plight is like unexplainable situation. It is like she cannot put out her words, she cannot clarify her doubt with any of the people around. That is the situation of plight. Now she is wondering up and down, back and forth. This old man observes the owner's wife, the plantation owner's wife and he calls her, he offers the tender coconuts and both of them sit on the embankment of the well. So she had no other choice except to go and sit next to the old man on the embank embankment of the well. So after he sits, he starts narrating a story. So what is the story all about? Now this is the main thing you need to observe. He starts narrating a story that far off place there was a man called Tamanna and he had all the wealth. He had everything he wanted in his life. So what did he have? He had 10 acres of wetland, he had a house, he had people around to help him. And most of all, we should not forget of all the possession, he had his rival named Sangoji, also known as Basavaya. So don't forget the name of Sangoji and don't mistake that Sangoji is none other than Basavaya. Initial days, there will be a competition between Tamanna and Basavaya. So, what is this competition all about? There is a healthy competition in initial days, but later on it turns out to be rivalry. But how? What was the competition all about? If Tamanna purchased 5 acres of land, Basavaya went on purchasing 10. If Tamanna purchased 10, Basavaya purchased 15. So what happens? This healthy competition turns out rivalry eventually. And it leads to such a horrible condition that there is no more land left in the entire village. Why? Because either the land belonged to Tamanna or Baswaya. And not just that, it's not just about land. Think about it. There were also people who took side of Tamanna and Baswaya. If Tamanna had 10 friends, Baswaya had 15 admirers. If you read the text, it is clearly told that admirers, there is a differentiation between friends and admirers. Friends don't need anything except your friendship, but admirers do. Observe this, the use of words gives you a clear meaning. Who has friends and who has admirers? So what happens? Eventually everything turns out bad and at the end of few days or few months of this situation, Tamanna owned 1000 acres of land and Basavaya owned 800 acres of land. So obviously, if one man possess more wealth, the other would not tolerate. So what would you do if any of your enemy possess more wealth than you do? It is of course, you cannot bear it. You would get angry. You want to confiscate or you want to earn more. 
in this case Basavaya has no land to buy more so what he does is he sends a word to Tamanna asking him to sell 200 acres of land to him but guess what Tamanna not only rejects instead he sends a word to Basavaya asking him to sell all the acres that he owns this leads to more anger it does imagine the situation of Basavaya now Tamanna is very clever so what should Basavaya do now he takes his people and forcefully grabs hold of 200 acres of land of Tamanna and he builds a fence across that 200 acres of land now should Tamanna keep quiet he cannot he shouldn't and for his good deeds his supporters they tell him that we can go and seek justice from the court or we can take help of police we somehow need our land we need to take back our land which we owned it is the wrong deeds of Basavaya because he has forcefully confiscated grabbed our land what will Tamanna do now will he go to the court and appeal for the justice or will he take help from the police he does neither he comes up with the brilliant idea of composing ballots if you don't know what ballots are ballots are nothing but a sort of poems which are sung which are not written but which are sung <clears throat> here Tamanna comes up with a brilliant idea of composing ballots and singing them he neither goes to court nor he goes to the police this is a brilliant idea isn't it he comes up with an idea of composing ballads so what does the ballad consist of what is this ballad all about what does it what message does it speak about the ballad speak about Basavaya's cruelty and meanness so this is how Tamanna wants to damage the image of Basavaya so Tamanna gives himself completely to compose ballads he does and he starts denting the image of Basavaya we don't know whether he had an intention of hurting Basavaya but all he wanted was to compose ballads and to get back his land so what he does he starts composing and he starts singing them his name and fame gains popularity and people start listening not just people also the scholars when Tamanna began to compose ballads there are a lot of critics who took the ballads of Tamanna and they analyzed and they gained their fame that's how famous Tamanna gets meanwhile what will Basavaya do here he just sits and watches and watches and burns with his anger he can't do anything much meanwhile he also tried to sing but was he successful he wasn't he couldn't be successful so Tamanna is gaining popularity and not just that till now the domain was visible both of them fought for land both of them fought for admirers or for friends now it is moving towards invisible domain Tamanna starts denting the image of Basavaya so Basavaya had no answer to this he also tried to sing but couldn't 
So what should Basavaya do now? Basavaya tried to sing and failed miserably. Tamanna is gaining popularity on the other hand. So Basavaya has to do something in order to quench his thirst of revenge. So what he does is, he invites the scholars, he invites the poets, he builds a big palatal house, he decorates himself with precious stones, diamonds, jewelry, lot of things. But was he happy? No. Why? Because of all the people who visited his house, told Basavaya that there is something lacking. What was that? It was the books of Tamanna. And on the other hand, Tamanna was completely involving himself in composing ballads. He was not worried whether Basavaya was encroaching his lands, whether Basavaya was confiscating or taking the lands Tamanna owned. All he was focusing and concentrating was creating ballads because art had become the raison d'etre. It means it's a French word. It says it is a part of life. It has become the life itself. He cannot live without composing ballads. Now Tamanna has reached such an extent that he could live without 1000 acres of land but he could not live without composing ballads. To counterattack, he did all the stuffs. Basavaya now he has done lot of gimmicks. He has invited scholars, he has invited poets, he has decorated his house with precious stones but still there is one thing lacking in his house. That's Tamanna's box. So therefore he started inviting scholars, poets and musicians to his place and he just satisfied himself saying okay at least I have done so much. So this is how I can invest myself. Now one day what happens? Basavaya came to know that Tamanna was sick, Tamanna was ill. And he just taps his shoulder and tells, this is the time for me. Tamanna's health is deteriorating. It is going down. And he says, Tamanna's disease was Basavaya's health. He says, his disease, if he is sick, I am becoming stronger. If he has disease, that is my health. So by this time, Tamana had thought of yet another method or idea of punishing Basavaya. Because he was fed up of all the wrongdoings of Basavaya. So what he does is, this time he wants to end up. So he thinks of death. If you read the chapter, it is not clearly mentioned. Because when Tamanna says death, we don't know whether Tamanna is talking about his own death or he wants to kill Basavaya. Now, if you could see, we have got the entire text page here. These words are very important. As Tamanna is narrating a story, remember now both Tamanna and the owner's wife both are sitting on the embankment of well and is narrating the story and the story is not yet done. So he explains to the owner's wife saying man needs wealth, education, art and many more things and yet he lives for some kind of unbearable vengefulness. Isn't it true? This line suits the present scenario. We human beings, we want everything but still 
we are not happy and we live for some kind of vengefulness maybe not everybody but few for sure without it there would be no reason for his existence it could be vengefulness it could be his dream it could be anything else but there should be a purpose for each and everybody to be existing on this earth without a purpose without a destiny your life goes waste this is not a real story now you might be wondering what is happening here tamanna is narrating a story to the owner's wife and all of a sudden you get to hear this this is not a real story only what i have heard somewhere so who is saying this tamanna is saying to the owner's wife he says this is not a real story only that i have heard somewhere but is it true let us see that you may know that i subscribe to a daily to you i am just an old man after a particular age man loses his name isn't it true when the word man it is not about man here it is about a man kind it could be both man and woman it is not just man and tamanna says after few days or, or after few months or years or ages everybody will lose their name his age becomes important and his name vanishes into thin air now i am an old man in this garden your servant i am also the person who reads the newspaper and looks after the garden properly he goes on giving the description about himself this is a clever aspect p lankesh has used as we read the chapter readers might feel that tamanna is none other than the old man himself so using the character of an old man p lankesh is trying to convince the readers that tamanna is a different character for a moment every reader or readers would feel that tamanna is none other than the old man so he uses the character old man to convince the readers and to convince the owner's wife that tamanna is a different character and i am not tamanna i conceived the story of tamanna and basavaya when all of a sudden now till this point it seems as if tamanna is talking to the readers but all of a sudden there is a shift in this chapter there is a shift in the course i conceived the story who is i here i refers to the author himself because tamanna could not know anything about russia or america even if he did and let us not just assume that tamanna didn't know anything just because he was an agriculturist remember he says that he subscribes he subscribes to a daily maybe he knew it is left to the perception of the reader to consider this i factor as an author or tamanna whoever it might be he says i conceive the story of tamanna and basavaya when all of a sudden russia told america this is very important example this is one of the best examples anyone could ever use he says russia told america i am not your enemy i shall not wage a war against you so what would what must have been the reaction of america the sworn enemy of russia to this declaration we know that america and russia they always have cold war they never had an open war so he uses this beautiful example and he says oh one more important thing you could just compare russia and america to tamanna and basavaya now what is happening here as the days passed on in in the chapter as the days passed on basavaya dies so tamanna had no other option 
except giving up all his desires what should tamanna do after basavaya died all these days all these months and all these years he was very competitive and all of a sudden when tamanna hears that basavaya no longer exists he has no entity his purpose of life is dead you compare this example to that scenario and imagine how should america feel when russia told america that i am not your sworn enemy i am not going to wage a war tamanna says country like america can withstand that they can just go on living as if nothing happened but we human beings can't let me just give you one more example imagine your neighbor is problematic he always fights with you he always wants to create some trouble with you or for you so what do you want to do now you have a problematic neighbor and you want to teach him a lesson so the whole night you sit and think of an idea how to teach him a lesson or how to counterfeit or how to give a counterfeit answer to your neighbor so the planning is going on the whole night you sit and plan out and the next morning your neighbor knocks at your door and gives you a beautiful smile and tells i am not going to create any problem henceforth what would be your reaction i am sure you would just scratch your head and your brain would pop out of your head and hit the roof so that's the exact reaction from america and he says whether Amer america reacted in that way we don't know but tamana says i felt the same pain i could have accepted the pain of competition or rivalry but without these two my existence has no meaning so probably he says probably you will not understand the agony and boredom of america once it knew russia was no more an enemy a nation is capable of withstanding strains like this but a human being cannot i suffered a similar fate now this is very important he says i suffer so did he let out his secret identity did he just let out his identity to the readers saying that he was none other than tamanna could be possibly i thought my death alone could destroy basavaya i gave up everything and started off now he is revealing his identity a few days later or few days after i left basavaya passed away he had no more reason to live my name is tamanna now you need to know my name is tamanna so this old man is none other than tamanna after his death i forgot all my songs and ballads i who was once famous became a non entity thus i avenged myself your husband is flourishing today as a rich man he is not amenable to any advice amenable nobody is in a position to give him a piece of advice man is so complicated that till the day of his death he goes on living for some revenge or the other confronting one challenge or the other amma now with this so here he winds up his story and he goes on to the present scenario and he tells amma do not think otherwise just assume i did not tell you any of this or think all this happened in a dream the laborers have started going home 
that young child of Lokya paints well. He is bedridden with fever. I shall pay him a visit. Now, he tells the landlord's wife not to take all this words or this story too seriously. He reveals his identity at the end of the story and he tells that the fellow who owned 1000 acres of land is working as a laborer in some other plantation. What happened? Did he lose all his 1000 acres of land? And why did he forget his ballots? Was his purpose only to avenge himself or only to give a befitting reply to Basavaya? This chapter might seem very simple. It seems like a bedtime story or it seems like a moral story. And not just that, at the end of the chapter, you need to observe one thing. Forgive me, there is a star here which gives a clear indication that the chapter is done. And what you could see after this is very important. P. Lankesh is a clever author. He says, forgive me. He is asking the forgiveness of the readers. Unable to elaborate, I have told you whatever I felt as it is. So, this is not a true story. He says, I felt as it is. I had seen all this in a dream. So, this chapter is nothing but the dream of P. Lankesh. When he was fast asleep, he might have conceived this story in his dream. It seems funny, but it is not. It seems simple, but it is not. But why is that? Because this chapter has given such a huge message to the entire mankind. Don't possess anything that you cannot look after. We are locked in the corona situation. Just watch the media's telecasting how the dead bodies are dragged without being touched. That's our life. Out of all the pleasures, out of all the luxurious life we have led, what is the ultimate purpose of our life here? We are dragged like a product. P. Lankesh wants to give a beautiful message to the world through Tamanna that nothing is permanent in your life. We come with nothing, we earn everything and we go back with nothing. Thank you everyone. I hope you enjoyed the session. Have a good day.